Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? It's actually, it's it's a little bit humid, but it's pretty morning. The, the sky is pretty. The clouds are really pretty. Looks like we might have some more rain floating through. The moon was huge this morning. Looks like it's down now. But I could see it as the sun was coming up. That was kind of weird. Looks like we're heading for another eclipse. Um, what was I going to say? Lost my thought. I had it when I first started the video, and I lost it. Um, dang. <clears throat> okay, I don't know where that one went, but anyway. Uh, this morning, we're going to pray Psalm 121, God, the help of those who seek him, a song of accents. And one of the, probably one of the cornerstones or keynotes of the Christian faith is that when you seek God, you find him. There's no one that's that's ever gone to seek God and has desired to find him and has not found him. Excuse me. Now, there are people that have said that. I called out to God and nothing happened. But their heart wasn't in the right place. They weren't genuinely looking for God. They were looking for uh, some weird, something weird to happen. Uh, something, a miracle to happen. Something to happen that they could say, oh, okay, well, there's God. And that's not how he works. Anyone who genuinely looks for him, anyone who seeks him with their heart, finds him every time. And it it's not going to be, for some people, it's a grand event. But most of the time, it's not. It's just a, a sudden realization or a change or like you, you can literally feel something happening inside you. Um, a, a sudden realization of your life. Uh, you know, an awakening. Uh, most people talk about it that have that real conversion. It's an awakening. And it's amazing. It doesn't have to be this, you know, light beams coming down out of the sky, ground shaking, that kind of stuff, which a lot of people make it out to be. There's mega church pastors that have said, ah, oh, when the Lord came to me, light hit me in the face and I fell down on the ground. I couldn't move and I was paralyzed and all this kind of stuff. Well, that wasn't God. God don't do that to you. If anything, he lifts you up whenever it happens. That's what I love about these faith healers. You go in there and knock people down. Well, nobody in the Bible ever went down after they were healed. They got up. So I don't put a lot of stock in those guys. I don't put any stock in those guys. So when you look for the Lord, when you seek the Lord, and you do it from a place of genuine desire, you find him every single time. And the people who haven't, that's because they weren't doing it with their heart. He doesn't deny anyone who genuinely wants him, his presence or his salvation, anyone. But you got to want it. You have to really want it. And not, you know, well, I want God to prove himself to me. Well, he already has. Just do some Google searching. You can spend two hours on the computer and find only all the proof you want. You know, I had a conversation with a guy months ago. And he was talking about, I just can't believe it because there's just no proof. I was like, I can, I can give you link after link after link to the archaeological sites where they found the proof. It's all over the place. I can show you atheist um, archaeologists that tell you Jesus walked this earth. And anybody who denies it is, is an idiot because we have the proof. You know, it's all over the place. Everything that's in there. He goes, well, that's really not proof. I was like, okay, well, ask yourself this question. Because I showed him a bunch of stuff. I said, ask yourself this question. What would you need to believe? What proof are you looking for? You need to establish what proof you need to make it real for you. And then go look for that proof. He goes, well, if I do that, then I'm just, I'm, I'm just looking for it uh, because I want to find God. You know, I'm not letting God come find me. I said, God already found you. He's been watching you ever since you were born. I said, you now need to turn and look at him. So in order to do that is you've got to establish what your proof is. If you're not willing to figure out what the proof is because you're scared you may actually find God and you may actually find that proof, well, your desire isn't to be with the Lord. Your desire isn't to be proven. Your desire is to deny him because you're will willfully doing it now. And he kind of thought about it for a little bit. And I, I said, do you really want to find God or do you just want to argue with people that believe in him? Is your genuineness in your heart to search and find God? 
Or is it just to harass people that believe in it? And you, you think they're fools. So because I can show you any proof you're looking for. Up to, you know, j just shy of God actually standing before you shaking his hands. But but I told him, I said, but a, what a, an irony about that is, is that if you're meeting a born-again believer, in a way you're meeting God because God's spirit dwells in that born-again believer. So if I shake your hand, basically, you know, technically, you're meeting God. It's just a form. And he, 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 he contemplated it. He thought about it. I was, like, I was like, your desire, where your heart is, dictates whether you find God or not. It's not about proof. It's not about visuals. It's not about any of that stuff. It's not about feelings. It's not about dreams and visions. It's not about any of that. It's about, does, do you have it in your heart to find him? Is it your true desire to find him? And when you answer that question, then you know whether you need to keep searching or whether you need to figure out what evidence you need and go find that evidence. Because if your desire, I said, if, told him, if your desire is to find him, you're going to find him. But if your desire isn't, if it's something else, you're not going to find him. Until the day you stand at the white throne judgment. He goes, oh, that's where we're all judged about our works and all that kind of stuff. I said, well, yeah, but if you find yourself there, you're probably not going to like the end result of it because the end result is permanent and never can be changed. If I, told him, if I were you, I wouldn't wait that long. Because you may not enjoy how that turns out. And then I gave him the whole spiel about, well, what if you die tomorrow? You haven't made this decision. Then it's too late. You can't make that decision. Once that's it, that's it. You could die in a car wreck right now, today. You could die on the way home. You could die in the grocery store. Who knows? You can get hit with a meteorite. You can get hit with a jet engine. It blew off a jet that blew up up 30,000 feet. You didn't hear it. Land in your yard. You never know. Meteorite. You never know. But if you die without making that decision, it's too late. And so it, he, he, I never heard from him again. But he, he thought about it. At least he was thinking about it. So maybe I got some seeds planted. I don't know. We'll see. But if you genuinely search for him, you will find him. And it may not be what you imagine it's going to be. It may be something completely different, but you will find him. Let's get into some praise and worship this morning. <coughs> Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. For We want to give thanks for the rain, first of all, but we want to give thanks for changing our hearts. You saw in us that are born again something. And you gave us faith. You gave us a portion of the Holy Spirit for an awakening and, and to create a desire to seek you. You changed our hearts even before we were saved. So we would make the decision and come to you and stick by you. And then you changed us more. And we know by reading your word that the, the full change hasn't happened yet. The day of redemption is the day when everything is completed and fulfilled. When Jesus finishes the work he started in us. But there are a lot of people who claim to seek you, but never find you. And they live and lead an unfulfilled life. These are people that get in, into witchcraft. They get into faith healing. They get into... Um, all these weird ideas about religion and about you and, and why you see so much idolatry in the churches and stuff like that. But if they would have genuinely sought you with their heart, they would have found you. If they had, an, had a desire to actually find you, they would have found you. And they would lead a fulfilled life. We struggle. We have issues. But it's a fulfilled life because we have you in our hearts. And these other people are, they don't see, look like it on the outside, but they're miserable on the inside because you're not there. They don't have you in their lives. And it's kind of, kind of sad that they have one step to, to take to make it to you and they don't do it. <clears throat> so Father, thank you for giving us that opportunity. And thank you for us making that decision. 
Because I'm glad that I'm on your side and not on the world's side. I see what the world is doing. I don't want to be a part of that. My desire is to be with you. Just like everyone listening to these videos, their desire is to be with you. This morning we're going to pray Psalm 121, God the help of those who seek him. And we see classically throughout the Bible over and over again where you are always there. And we've talked about this in other videos. You're always there. Even when we're not paying attention, even when we don't think you're there, you're there. We don't notice all the things that you do for us. We don't notice all the little things that you do for us. So this morning we give thanks for those things, those little blessings, those little moments, those little changes that you make. The, when you spend so much time working in our lives and we are not even aware of it, we give thanks for those times. We give thanks for those things that you do that we aren't aware of, that we don't perceive. Because these are the good things that you do for those that love you. And these are the blessings you pour out that we're not aware of. So this morning we give thanks for those. Because even if we aren't aware that they're there, by your word we still know they're there. We still know you're doing them. These little things that seem kind of insignificant, but when we realize it from a spiritual standpoint, they are very significant. This world has gone out of its way to teach us not to perceive those things, to not to pay attention to the little things, but it's the little things that matter the most. And that's the insight I'm glad I have in our relationship between me and you, is those little things mean the most. Those little things make the difference. And that's awesome. Thank you again. I want to give thanks for this beautiful sky this morning. These beautiful clouds. The cooler temperatures, the rain. It's a wonderful thing. All these little things people take for granted. People take rain for granted. They take cloud cover for granted. Yet, some of the people that are working outside in the heat all the time, I know when I when I did hard labor all my life, I, I looked forward to a cloudy day, whether it was humid or not, just get the sun off my back. Look forward to the rainy days. Those are all blessings from you because they're all good things. So we give thanks for those today. This morning, I'd like to pray Psalm 121. God, the help of those who seek him. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. I promise I did not pre-read this to do my commentary. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Father, I did not read this. You know I didn't read this beforehand, that commentary. That commentary came from the Holy Spirit. Um, again, another, another little blessing that people... Most people don't catch, but I'm sitting here reading it. I said, like, wait, I was just talking about every bit of that. I did not pre-read this psalm. So thank you, Father, for the call of remembrance that the Holy Spirit does for the word when we're not paying attention and when we don't have a Bible with us, because that's awesome. Thank you for giving us peace, for teaching us your word and what it means and how it applies to us not other people us how it applies in our lives and that each one of us has a different walk has a, a different desire uh, we we work and we we praise and we worship in different ways because it's a very personal relationship between us and you each one of us Deuteronomy 32, 4 says, The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. This is one of the things that we know, where we know that all good things come from you, no bad things. And that if we would merely 
pay attention. Acknowledge the work that you do, that you are God, and that you are active in our lives. We will not fail. And life from the outside may not look very good, but our life will be grand because of the way you bless us. And we see the little things, and they make all the difference in the world. In Jesus' name, we pray and give you glory. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. Uh, I promise I did not pre-read Psalm 121 and then do that commentary. Uh, that commentary, because I paused at the beginning, that commentary was straight off the hip. Um, but I love when he does that. So he's always active. He's always working. He's always present and prevalent in the believer's life. And when you see him in your life, when you see him working, and you realize he's directing your path and that things are blessed, you're blessed, the people around you are blessed because of it, give thanks for that. Give thanks for him blessing those around you because it's a very good thing, and he does it. He blesses all the people around you too. Give thanks and praise and glory to God every chance you get. He likes it, and it's a good thing. And it's a small sacrifice for you to take some of your time and spend it with him, thanking him and praising him for what he's doing in your life versus all the things he does for us, which are innumerable. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I pray you guys have a fantastic day. i got to go to the VA this morning. Probably going to be there half the day, like usual. But that's okay. I will see you guys in the next video.